Howdy folks, it's Sage with the Hunting Gear Guy. The Alberta government made an announcement today. Mm. It's so good. I'm cracking open a, a mug of uh, homemade wine. Uh, just gotta enjoy it. Just savor small victories when we get them. Uh, so you might have seen my amendment video where I was complaining about how the federal government was banning just a crap load of new guns. Uh, today, the Alberta government announced two things. Uh, one, it's taking all federal firearms cases, sorry, it's taking all firearms cases provincial, most were anyways, but uh, it's taking those all under the purview of provincial prosecutors. Two, it's directing those prosecutors not to bother moving forward uh, with charges if it's just possession and the owner had it before May 2020, so before that OIC. So what does this mean? Uh, hard to say right now, but it looks like you can just do, like if st this all starts January 1st, 2023. Maybe you can just use those guns that uh, that the OIC covered, which weren't really largely being used in crime anyways. Like this is a complete uh, cluster of a, of a bill. Um, maybe you can start using those again. Uh, so that is, uh, that is interesting because, um, most of the gun owners I know had guns that were uh, prohibited in that OIC and now maybe they can keep them. And the other thing the government announced is that, um, anything in C21 with the amendments, if that passes, they're going to add those to this directive of not going forward with prosecution on it. So very interesting because uh, it might mean that, there, that we could just, within the province of Alberta, we can just use them. Some of the unknowns, um, what actually happens when you get the charge, right? If, if the police charge you with it, uh, if they confiscate that firearm as they believe it's to be prohibited based on the uh, federal firearms laws, uh, do they keep it confiscated? Do you get it back? Do you get charged? Or do the police eventually just get to a point where they're like, oh, well, no, the prosecutors aren't gonna go forward with that, so why even bother? Kind of similar to how they do hard drug charges right now. They don't really bother going forward with a lot of those. Um, maybe they'll do the same with these. Uh, the other unknown is uh, ARs because ARs were reclassified in that uh, May OIC um, from restricted to prohibited. Uh, do they go back to restricted? They can't go back to restricted. The federal government took those registration certificates and nullified them. Nullified isn't a thing in the Firearms Act, but they nullified them. Uh, so no one knows what the hell that means because that court, that case is still in court right now. So we, we don't really know where, where things are going with ARs right now. Maybe they'll be fine to use. Maybe they'll be treated as restricted. Doesn't really, maybe, maybe the Alberta CFO will probably, um, release some more information in the future with, uh, uh, what this is. The federal government's response on this. Now it's, it's just early days. It just happened today. Um, Lametti took a question about it at a press conference today. He claimed he didn't really know what it was all about. He's like, ah, oh, they want to take a provincial. I got a letter. Just, that's fine. They can do that. And, and then when he was pressed on it, they're like, no, actually it's about this firearms thing. And they said that they're not going to prosecute on it. Um, he was like, oh, well, that might be a constitutional violation and firearms law is federal. Um, which it is. F firearms, firearms law is federal in Canada. Uh, but the constitutional violation, I don't think so. Cause like other provinces or cities like uh, Vancouver famously just didn't prosecute on, um, they had, they had dispensaries that were flying against federal law and they famously just didn't prosecute on it and it was fine. They, they, nothing happened because of it. No constitutional crisis or anything like that. Um, so I don't think that there's anything really that can be done there. Uh, the federal government will need like some sort of additional legislation in order to, uh, rein this back in if they want to. So I'm not really worried too much about the federal uh, reaction to this. I'm more worried about what will happen uh, locally here. Uh, we have a provincial election coming up in uh, in spring uh, where Smith, who uh, who's the premier right now, and this is kind of happening, happening underneath her uh, watch, um, she's going up against Notley. And uh, in the polls, at least, it looks like Notley's going to win. So uh, and, and Notley has said straight out that she's uh, against ass assault style weapons and all this, whatever they what kind of words they want to make up to describe these firearms. Uh, so that's, that's not super promising. I would say that if you're in Alberta, if you live here and you have an NDP uh, provincial politician, uh, now's the time to mail them. Now's the time to send them letters saying, hey, I heard about this. I like this. Uh, if you guys get in, please keep this or... Um, I was on the fence about whether to vote for you or not. Uh, if you decide to keep this, I will vote for you. 
Um, that kind of that kind of pressure um, at the provincial le letter level is important because there's a strong possibility. This looks great. This looks fantastic. I'm like I'm really loving uh, the direction of this. The logic behind it is solid. This isn't something that the province should be spending any resources on. They shouldn't be spending police resources, prosecution resources. It's just total bullshit. So. Uh, this whole thing of like, yeah, we're not just not going to prosecute on that makes sense. Uh, it's a bunch of pay like the federal government is literally making a hundred, like hundreds of thousands of people paper criminals, uh, where they may or may not know like, oh yeah, that gun, the federal government said it's illegal, but I'm just going to keep it anyways, which is going to happen for a lot of people out there. And the provincial, the, it, it, I think it's the right move that the province is just going to say, we're not, we're not doing anything. I think Shandro made the, the right move here. So really like the... The way that we keep this is like, yeah, voting for, you know, the UCP. Um, the other thing is uh, try to convince the NDPs to keep it. Um, regardless of who gets in power, we need this thing to stay in so that we have this stuff protected uh, while we can. So if you don't want to be a single issue voter, get your preferred party to push this stuff. Otherwise, vote for the party that's going to run it through. Thanks for watching.